If you're like me, you've been using these flux brushes for glue ups. For one, I got tired of the bristles coming out and ending up in the glue. So I came up with a solution for that and more coming up. Hi there and welcome to WB Fun Woodworking. I'm Don. Today I'm going to share with you some tools that I use to help eliminate some of the mess in gluing. And towards the end, I've got something for you old timers like me. Something you probably don't know. I decided to try these Rockler silicone brushes for gluing. I found them on sale at a Rockler store one day. Prior to using these brushes, I was using the metal flux brushes that many people use. As I mentioned in the intro, the bristles would often get pulled out and end up in my glue. I also didn't like the fact that they were disposable. I found that these silicone brushes are very handy. They get into places just like the flux brushes did, so they're just as good for spreading glue. Of course, the real test was the cleanup. After letting the glue dry overnight, I was amazed that the glue slid right off the bristles. It was like the glue wasn't there. Since the small Rockler brushes work so well, I decided to try their larger brushes. I found this size to be very useful. I'm using one here to brush the glue on the handle of my dead blow mallet. I also found this brush size to work well when gluing up this panel for my mallet holder. This brush cleaned up just like the smaller one. I let it dry overnight and the glue just peeled right off the bristles. Unfortunately, Rockler doesn't make a larger silicone brush. One day, I was in a cooking utensil store and I saw some larger silicone brushes they were selling as pastry brushes. Those brushes were rather expensive. After searching Amazon, I came up with these brushes that were much more reasonably priced. Amazon sells the brushes for pastry and for brushing on barbecue sauce. I used one of these brushes to brush out the glue when I needed to glue 2x4s together for my workbench. The brush worked great. This brush was also handy when I applied glue to the legs of my outfeed table. I was very pleased at how well this large brush cleaned up. Since the brush is quite a bit larger than the Rockler brushes, it did take a little longer to clean it up, but it cleaned up very well. I also bought the silicone glue tray from Rockler. It came with a kit that they sell. This tray has turned out to be very useful for gluing. For this glue up, I put some glue in the bottom of the tray and dip the brush instead of pouring the glue from the bottle. You may have noticed that I'm using the pointed end of a small Rockler silicone brush. It's great for this kind of application. I also use the tray for a place for my brush to rest when I apply glue with the bottle. This helps keep the glue off the surface I'm working on and I know where my brush is. Here you can see how easily a puddle of dried up glue peels right off the bottom of the tray. I'm sure you noticed the red mat under some of my glue ups. It's a silicone mat. While Rockler sells a similar mat, I found mine on Amazon. They sell the mats for baking and pastry. I found this mat to be great for protecting my outfeed table and my workmate when I use them for my glue ups. 
During one of my glue ups, I ended up with this large smear of dried glue on my mat. You can see how quickly and easily it cleaned up. Now for something regarding glue and silicone that I have never seen before. Since the silicone items cleaned up so easily with the Type Bond 3 wood glue that I used, I decided to try them with epoxy and see what happened. For as long as I can remember, I mixed epoxy in a disposable bowl or some other container that I threw away. I decided to search through Amazon for a silicone container to mix epoxy in. I came up with these pinch bowls. They're made out of silicone. I thought I'd give them a try with epoxy. I squeeze out epoxy into one of the pinch bowls. To mix epoxy, I bought a big box of these tongue depressors or craft sticks. I discovered that the round bottom of the bowl matched perfectly with the round end of the stick. After I mixed the epoxy, I used one of the Rockler brushes to spread the epoxy where the ferrule goes on these ice cream scoop handles. Once the ferrules were glued on and dry, I used the pointed end of the brush to put epoxy into the hole where the shaft of the scoop attaches to the handle. I also brushed epoxy on the shaft of the scoop using the other end of the brush. As you can see, these pinch bowls came in handy when I had to assemble a dozen ice cream scoops with epoxy. Now I had to see if these pinch bowls cleaned up after using them for epoxy. Well, the pinch bowls cleaned up beautifully. The epoxy just popped out and I was able to scrape out any remaining small pieces. There was absolutely no epoxy left in the bowls. Next, I had to see how the Rockler brush cleaned up after using it with the epoxy too. I have to say that I was pleasantly surprised and amazed at how all this cleaned up. From now on, I know what I'll be using for epoxy glue-ups in the future. Caution! Do not try this experiment with CA glue. I can tell you from experience, it does not work. So there you have it. The fact that glue and silicone don't mix, even epoxy, is great for those of us that are woodworkers and creators. I appreciate you for checking out my channel. There are a couple of videos over here that you may want to watch if you haven't watched them already. And if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, you can just click on the logo.